Hello and welcome. This is a video on formula mass, percentage composition and reactive mass calculations. This topic is covered in the additional chemistry, also known as C2 chemistry. And what you'll need is access to a periodic table and a calculator. So we're going to start off with formula mass and before we do that we need to look at a periodic table. Now what you will notice is that every single element on here has two numbers attached to its symbol. So let's look at oxygen here for example in group 6. Now oxygen has the numbers 16 and 8. Now the biggest number in any element is known as the mass number. So in this case for oxygen it's 16. The smallest number is atomic number and this just tells you the number of protons and electrons. However the mass number tells you how heavy the atom is and this is what we're going to be using for calculating formula mass. So here is uh, the structure of water or H2O. Now you can see it's got oxygen and hydrogen in its structure. So how do you work out the formula mass? Well, we need the mass numbers of oxygen and hydrogen, and we just basically add up the number of elements. So for example, we've got one oxygen, so we do one times 16, obviously it gives us 16. We've got two hydrogens, each one has a mass of one, so two times one gives us two. We add 16 and 2 together and we end up with a formula mass of 18 for water. So why don't you have a go at this example here for uh, sulfuric acid or H2SO4. You can pause the video and I'll go through the answer next. Okay, so we've got two hydrogens, 1 and 2. So that's 1 times 2 gives us 2. We've got one sulfur here in the middle and that has a mass of 32. We've got four oxygen, so that's four times 16, gives us 64. We add up two, 32 and 64, and we end up with 98 uh, as a formula mass for H2SO4. So now I'm going to move on to percentage composition by mass. Now these calculations tell us the uh, relative proportions of different elements in a compound. And we can work this out by looking at the formula of the compound. So to explain this, I'm going to answer this question. What is the percentage mass of oxygen in Al2O3, which is aluminium oxide? The first thing I'm going to do is work out the formula mass of the compound. So we've got two aluminiums, so 2 times 27. We've got three oxygens, three times 16. We add all these up and we get a formula mass of 102 for aluminium oxide. The next thing is we need to work out the mass of the element that was in the question. So if you remember that was oxygen, but we have three oxygens in aluminium oxide. So we do three times 16 and that gives us 48. We then put our values into this equation. So mass of element over formula mass of compound multiplied by 100 to convert it to a percentage. So we get our values. So we've got 48 for oxygen and 102 as the formula mass. Multiplied by 100, this gives us 47% oxygen by mass. So why don't you pause the video and have a go at this question. I'll go through the answer next. Okay, so once again, the first thing we do is we work out the formula mass for sodium carbonate, which is 106. We then work out the mass of carbon that the question is asking for. And there's only one carbon, so it's 12. We put that into our equation that I showed you earlier. We do 12 over 106 multiplied by 100, and that gives you 11%. So now we're going to move on to the final part of the video, which is about reactant mass calculations. Now these calculations allow us to see what mass of reactants react with each other and what mass of products are produced. So for example, here I've got an equation for producing water. If I wanted to produce 36 grams of water, I will need 32 grams of oxygen and 4 grams of hydrogen. So this tells me the relative proportion of the reactants to the products and this information is valuable because I could then scale down uh, the product. So if I want, only wanted to produce 18 grams of water, I would then halve the reactants. Now this is very, very useful in industry because some reactants are very, very expensive. So you need to know exactly how much product you'll make. So we're going to start off by answering this question. Magnesium sulfate can be made from magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid. And then it gives you the balance symbol equation. So it says calculate the mass of magnesium sulfate. 
that would be obtained from 4 grams of magnesium. So the question is only uh, talking about magnesium and magnesium sulfate. Now we can safely ignore hydrogen and sulfuric acid. So the first step that we do is we need to write out our two substances like so and then write the masses uh, of the substances just below. So the mass of one magnesium is 24 and the formula mass of magnesium sulfate is 120. So what does this tell us? Well it tells us that 24 grams of magnesium uh, produces 120 grams of magnesium sulfate. Now depending on the question this could be kilograms or tons it doesn't really matter. So we need to now convert this 24 grams into 1 gram. So how do we do that? Well we uh, divide 24 by 24 and that gives us 1. Now to keep the ratios the same we have to also divide the 120 by 24 and that gives us 5. So now we have 1 gram of magnesium produces 5 grams of magnesium sulfate. So now we need to scale it up to the 4 grams the question was asking for. So we multiply the 1 by 4 and that gives us 4. And then we multiply the 5 by 4 as well and that gives us 20. So our final answer is 4 grams of magnesium produces 20 grams of magnesium sulfate. So here's another exam question. Please pause the video and have a go at this yourself and then I will go through the answer next. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is that the question is only referring to iron and iron sulfate, so we can ignore H2SO4 and H2. And then we need to write out our two substances of interest like we did earlier. And I've also written down the masses below as well. So we've got 56 for iron and the formula mass for iron sulfate is 152. So that tells us that 56 grams of iron produces 152 grams of iron sulfate. So to make it easier, I need to convert this 56 grams of iron into one gram. And to do that, I will divide 56 by 56. So that gives me one. I need to keep the ratios the same on this side. So I'll do 152 divided by 56. And that will give me 2.714 to four significant figures. Now, if it does make it easier for you, then you can just use all the numbers in your calculator. And then the question said uh, 4 grams of iron, so we multiply the 1 by 4, that gives us 4. And we'll do the exact same thing to this side. So we do 2.714 multiplied by 4, and that will give us 10.86, uh, which has been rounded to two decimal places. So our final answer is 4 grams of iron produces 10.86 grams of iron sulfate. So what answer does the mark scheme give? Well, the mark scheme gives the answer 10.86 grams, but it will accept any answer between 10.64 to 10.9 grams. And uh, this is because some people may take different uh, significant figures or they may have rounding errors, so they've not been penalized. Now, if the question uh, asked how much iron sulfate could you produce from 0.35 grams, well, we will use the exact same method. So once again, we need to scale down the iron to one gram and then multiply this by 0 0.35 and that will give us uh, 0 0.95 grams. So final tips for doing reacting mass calculations. You need to make sure that the equation is balanced if it isn't already balanced. You need to only highlight the substances that is asked in the question and you need to make sure you select the appropriate uh, number of significant figures so that you can get accurate answers. So that is the end of the video. Please don't forget to subscribe for more science videos and there is a link in the description box to download some exam questions with the mark scheme included. Uh, the link is totally safe and it's from my Google Drive and uh, thank you for watching.